Assalamu alaikum. We have got an incredible guest today on the rotation, Miss Dania Agil. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Wa alaikum assalam. Alaikum assalam. Ah, oh, fina nihki Arabi hon. Come on. You are born in Jeddah. You went to college in the UK, which is crazy, but you are the first ever super bike racer and the first Saudi woman to obtain a speed bike competitive license. How, how do you feel being the first of something? Um, honestly, I, I just love uh, driving cars and riding bikes. And I have to tell you that uh, the feeling of being the first isn't so much about, it's not so impactful to be the first because I think I would have done it anyway because I love it so much. But the feeling uh, of being exposed so closely to something new taking place, that will stay with me, I think, for life. Yeah, everything in Saudi is new in terms of competing here in the country. But I know in 2019, when you made your way back to the uh, back to the Middle East, you ended up racing in the Ducati Cup in a speed bike. And then from there in 2021, you did the Baja races and you win Rookie of the Year. Then, Haram, you get in. Look, Haram, Haram, alhamdulillah, uh, ala salamtik, you get injured. And in the injury, you write a book, Free Falling. But then you get introduced to Dakar. So tell me the difference between the speed racing huh, in the in the two and now you're in the t3 okay so basically actually that's all really accurate um so yeah i started racing on speed bikes in dubai and at the ducati cup that was uh, my first place for uh, competitive racing i loved it a lot my goal was to be rookie of the year alhamdulillah that goal was achieved. So I shifted to rally post-accident, not because of it directly, but actually because I had gone back to Saudi at that time. So it was two years after I started. Um, it was a year after I started racing bikes. I went back to Jeddah. I had my recovery time. I wrote the book. And then when I was ready to race again, it was during the pandemic time. So all the borders were closed and people weren't traveling so much. So I didn't get on a plane and go back to the bikes. Instead, I looked uh, around me and looked in Saudi Arabia and what's available. And it was, in fact, a uh, rally cross country, specifically the Dakar rally. So tell me um, the importance of the Saudi Ministry of Sports and the Saudi Motorsport Federation. Um, them encouraging you to join the Dakar, them encouraging you to be the first ever female racer and just like the progression they've been making and you being a leader. Well, um, so that is actually uh, what happened. They encouraged me to come and join the Dakar. There was other female racers at the time as well. Um, and what the Federation was doing, the Motorsport Federation was inviting us to come and see the Dakar rally and just saying, look, this international event takes place here. What do you think about it? Would you be interested to do it? If so, we can connect you with, uh, you know, maybe some teams. Ulilni il importance fi ihna il banat fil riyada. Sports are, wallah, so important, and every youth should be able to have access to it and do it. Yeah, sports is is is, uh, is such a useful part of uh, life. You know, like you said, you build skills, organization, discipline, and focus. Definitely, those are crucial for racing. Things like patience and learning how to communicate and deal with your teammates. That is something also priceless because when you drive and rally, you have a co-driver, a navigator, and you need to be able to work together as a team. Speaking of racing, you go to the Dakar and then you get eighth place. Like you don't just go for fun. You go break that top 10, which is just so mashallah. I want to ask you a couple questions about the race because it's unique to especially people in the West. You know, it's a two week long rally over nine, 10,000 kilometers, you know. So I want to know what takes place during it. First thing is, do you have anything cool in the car? You know, and like it's shwayat, like air freshener and like, you know, photo of your family. Wallala, go to she is just metal. Honestly, it's just, yeah, it's just metal. Come it's on. just a race car, super regulated. You know, everything is like down to the T. Dania, you are on the rotation, so we do have to play a little game, get to know you better, see what's in your rotation. And also, I've just been wanting to get to know you. You're such a wallah, composed, beautiful woman. Let's see what's under there. Okay. I want to know what are like your artists that you listen to in rotation before a race? It could even be like the Quran or whatever. Do you listen to stuff or do you stay focused? Um, sometimes I do listen to the Quran. I have to say it, it's a very calming, uh, you know, thing to, to be around. Uh, for music, if you click on my playlist, it just says mix and it'll take you all the way from the 50s till today. But who's your top three? Don't forward. play me. I need names. Who's your top three? Who are you bumping? 
I can't do it. Oh, I, can't do I knew she would do this. I knew she would do this. She wouldn't give us one. Okay, so um, I'm talking like country, hip hop, techno, other be music. No, no, no. I, tell you, I love country and I and I like hip hop and I like pop. Um, I'm not into drum and bass or anything intense like that. I like lyrics in my songs. Well, before we get out of here, I want to talk to you about something that inspires me that you're a part of, which is the Neon Project. You know, you've been out here uh, doing promo for them. Is there something about it that we should know that we have no idea about? Like, how big is this project and the Middle East being the future of the world? I mean, look, when I was there, I did a shoot with Vogue for it. And it was all about how Neom is be being built in, in coherence with nature, right? So it's not there to disrupt or disturb anything. It's there to work with the environment, to have this place where people can live, you know, in, in, a, in somewhere that's not in conflict with the location or with the natural surroundings. If you had one thing to say about how prideful you are about everything that's happening in the Middle East, what would it be? Especially as these doors are opening and all of us females are running through them. I mean, I would say just if there's something that calls you, there's a lot of opportunity and this is the time to engage. You know, this is the time to produce. I think that whatever we do today, we're going to see tenfold come back to us in a few years. Um, I think that it's the time to make the most of things. And it's really exciting to live in a place that has so much um, access to, to opportunity. You know, it, it, it's really something. And we have a lot of energy, right? We need to exert it. We need to produce. We need to express. And when you're in a place that uh, offers you that uh, challenge, not even a challenge, they just offer you the chance. I think it's uh, it's important to take it. Well, inshallah, I can't wait to meet you soon. I'm going to be right next to you in that car. Don't worry about my past history with cars. I'm going to come ready to go. We're going to win some races. And from my sister in the Middle East, thank you so much for coming on the rotation. Well, I love you. You inspire me and everyone around us. So thank you. Thank you to you for having me.